Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be showcasing builds for all three Warlock specializations that are gonna be good for open world content, leveling, questing, playing with a friend or two, basically for any sort of content that you're gonna do outside of instanced content. Uh, so we're gonna get into the video here, but before I start, I wanna let you know about some resources that are gonna be available for you. So as we go through this video, I'm going to be showcasing these talent builds and you're gonna be able to find uh, talent builds for every 10 levels starting at level 20. So you'll have one at level 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70. Uh, for each of the specializations, so you can kind of pick up the build wherever you're at in your leveling process. And uh, you're also going to be able to find weak auras, rotation helpers that I've created for each one of these builds that are designed to uh, help you learn how to play and also just kind of help you sort of mindlessly go about your rotation 9 out of 10 times if you want to. The rotation helpers will not play the game for you. Um, you still have to make some of your own calls, make your own decisions um, in some situations, and we'll talk about those as we get into each of the specializations. Uh, but I find them to be very helpful and many people who have used them for the other classes have enjoyed them as well. So all those resources are gonna be available to you at our channel Gilded uh, server, which you can find a link to in the description below. So it's a lot like Discord, but we got more tools and resources and things that we can use. Uh, we've got a lot of World of Warcraft content on there. We also run our events through there. So uh, for World of Warcraft right now, one of the main events we do is um, at the beginning of every month, we get together, have a play session, and we work on trading post activities so that we can max our, out our trading post currency and be able to get all those nice, cool cosmetics. Medics. But in addition to that, we also do a lot of things that are not related to World of Warcraft. Uh, so we are ramping up for the launch of the Destiny 2 expansion, Lightfall, which comes out soon. We have a book club. Uh, we're going to be playing the open beta for Diablo 4 together. So we just we do a lot of cool stuff there. I'd encourage you to check out the Gilded server. If you just want the resources, then you can come and get the resources. But if you want to uh, try to join the community and become a part of what we're doing, then that would be awesome as well. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in game here. So I'm out on the Onaran Plains where I will be demoing these builds. So I've got lots of neutral enemies that I can fight out here to kind of show you the rotation as I need to. We'll go fight some red bar normal mobs. And then I also got the request to showcase these builds against an elite mob. So we'll be doing that for each one of these as well. So we're gonna be going in the order of affliction, demonology, then destruction. But before we get into that, I wanna kind of uh, run you through the, the layout of what you should be looking at here. So first off, I have my action bars down here. Uh, I've got my health and resources here. And then right above is where you're gonna see the weak auras rotation helpers. And just so you can kind of see what these are gonna look like, there's going to be a bar, uh, kind of a, a row of icons here. And basically, you just follow these from left to right, and they will kind of tell you what abilities you should be using or casting. Uh, again, you do have to make kind of your own calls for some things, like when you want to use a cooldown or uh, when you need to use your AoE abilities instead of your single targets. But in many, many cases, um, the rotation helper will kind of do a lot of that um, for you in terms of suggesting what you should be doing next. So before we get in and talk about spec specific stuff, and this is a, I, I'm pretty confident this druid is a bot because they are always out here. So <laughs> we may have to adjust our demos based on whatever they're doing. Uh, but before we get into the specialization specific stuff, we're going to jump in and take a look at the spells and abilities that we're going to have in common across all the world of the warlock specializations. So let's go ahead and jump in here. We're going to start with burning rush. Burning rush is our movement speed increasing ability on warlock. It's pretty much the only one we really have have when we activate it it will start to deal damage over time to us but it will give us a really nice speed buff the warlock has a lot of ways to regenerate health very quickly and they also have some ways to mitigate some of that damage early on uh, so having the burning rush deal damage over time to us is not really that big of a deal we've also taken a couple talents to reduce the amount of damage it does as well 
Next, we have Command Demon. This will command your chosen demon that you have summoned to do a special ability. And we'll talk about those special abilities for the demons that we actually use for these builds. Next, we have Corruption. This is a damage over time ability that's going to last 14 seconds. Next, we have Create Health Stone. So when you use this, it will create a health stone item in your bags that you can use like a health potion. It will give you three charges, and those charges do have a cooldown. Create Soul Well will make a Soul Well where your party or raid members can acquire um, a set of soul, uh, health stones as well. Next, we have a couple of curses. So these curses, I'm just going to blanket statement, let you know that we are not going to use curses in these builds. You may occasionally want to use one on like an elite or a rare spawn if you really want to, but it's not necessary. Uh, but these are very good for PvP. So if you are out in, um, you know, PvP content or open world PvP, you could potentially use these. But just blanket statement, uh, we're not really going to use them in, in these builds. So Curse of Exhaustion will reduce the target's movement speed. Curse of Tongues will increase their cast time. And Curse of Weakness will increase the time between the enemy's attacks. Now, this is a really easy one to throw on something, especially like a uh, elite or a rare spawn, uh, just to uh, kind of increase their the time between their auto attacks. Um, which can help you mitigate some damage, but really we just have so much like survivability uh, and damage output in these builds that it's not super necessary. If you do find yourself in a pickle, Dark Pact is going to be our main go-to defensive cooldown we use. It's got a one-minute cooldown. It will sacrifice 5% of your current health to give you a shield for 800% of that sacrificed health. Plus, it will heal for an additional amount over 20 seconds, and you can use this while you're under crowd control effects. So if you get into a sticky situation and your health stone and the other things we have don't work first, Dark Pack's going to be our go-to for defense. Next, we have Demonic Circle and Demonic Circle Teleport. So Demonic Circle will summon a Demonic Circle at your location. And then you can move around, go somewhere else, and you can use Demonic Circle Teleport to teleport to back there. Now, in outdoor content for Dragonflight, really, I find this to be most useful to use it as like a secondary bronze time lock, where essentially what you would do is you'd fly up to a hill here, you put your teleport up there, um, and then you could come down, do some herbs, do a quest or something, and then teleport back up to your demonic circle and then take off from height on your dragon uh, so that you can get some of that uh, momentum going really quickly. So that's usually the best way that I find to use this uh, at the moment. Or you could place it at like a quest hub or a quest giver, go out, do some quests and stuff and then teleport back to it. Next, we have Demonic Gateway. So what Demonic Gateway is going to do is it's going to put a gate down where you are, and then it's going to put a gate down wherever you cast it. So uh, let's say that we're in this situation, and there's a big gap, and I can't ride my dragon or something, and I want to get across this creek. I could do my Demonic Gateway, and I could cast it here. And then what's going to happen is it'll make those gates. I can click on it. I'll teleport over here, and then I can click on this gate. Oh, well, it won't let me use it because I'm on cooldown. Um, but you can click on this gate and go back uh, across the way. This isn't super useful in outdoor contents um, with the fact that we can dragon ride because most situations where you may have needed to use this or where it would have been really helpful are just kind of negated by the fact that you can just hop on your dragon and go. All right. So our next ability is Drain Life. Drain Life is going to be our main way to recover our health after health stones. So Drain Life is a channeled ability that's going to deal shadow damage over around three seconds, and it's going to heal us for 500% of the damage done. It also heals for 30% more if we're below 50% health. So when we get low, we're just going to cast Drain Life, and that's going to give us a significant portion of our health back. Now, Drain Soul, we're going to skip. This is affliction specific, and this ability does change based on what specialization we are playing. So we'll cover that when we talk about each specialization. Next, we have Eye of Killrog. This summons an eyeball, uh, and it binds your vision to it. And then basically what you can do is you can run around as this stealthed eyeball and try to scout things out, which most of the time isn't super necessary unless maybe it's indoors. Because again, you just hop on your dragon and kind of fly around and see what's going on. Uh, next up, we have Fear. So Fear is going to be our crowd control ability that we use. This will strike Fear into the enemy, disorienting them for 20 seconds. 
Okay, so when we cast this, it's basically going to uh, cause that target to uh, be disoriented for that 20 seconds and kind of give us a window where we can either work on a different enemy um, or we can recover our health if we're in a bad situation. Next, we have Health Funnel. You can kind of think of Health Funnel as like drain life for your pet in a sense. But what it's going to do is sacrifice 25% of your health in order to heal your summon demon for twice that much, uh, twice that value. So if your pet is uh, getting low on health, then that's how you heal your pet. So you basically can health funnel and then you could do something like drain life or use a health stone to get your own health back up. Next, we have Mortal Coil. Uh, Mortal Coil is going to be a incapacitate ability we can use. It's got a 45 second cooldown. It will incapacitate the target and heal you for 20% of your maximum health. Now you got a couple options here. You can use this primarily to heal back 20% of your maximum health, but really we have a lot of ways to get health back anyway, so that's not super necessary. You could use this just as an incapacitating effect, mainly to interrupt spell cast, which is the better way I think that it's used, or you can wait for the optimal situation where you need health recovery and the target is casting a spell so you can get the benefits of both generally my recommendation because we do not have a strong instant cast uh interrupts on the warlock by default is just to treat mortal coil like your normal interrupt and if the enemy is casting a spell then you just interrupt it with mortal coil regardless of whether or not you need the healing we have Ritual of Doom, so this will sacrifice a random participant uh, in order to summon a Doom Guard. So the caster and four additional party members are needed to complete the ritual. This is not something we're going to use in these builds because uh, these are designed for you to play solo or maybe with two or three friends, so it's going to be hard for you to do that. Next, we have Ritual of Summoning. So this will create a Ritual of Summoning that requires the caster and two other allies and then will let you summon other party and raid members to your location. Again, not something we're really gonna use because if we're playing with two or three, uh, two other people, one or two other people here, um, then we're not gonna have anyone to summon with the Ritual of Summoning. Next, we have Shadow Fury. This is an AOE stun with the caveat that it does have a cast time. So you will get a, a big circle like this, you'll put it down, you'll cast, and then everything within that circle will be stunned for three seconds. So this is really nice in situations where you know an enemy is going to cast uh, some sort of annoying move and you can get out of the way of that move and cast the stun to prevent that damage from being done to like your pets or your other party members. Next, we have Soul Stone. Soul Stone is going to store the soul of the target party or raid member, allowing resurrection upon death. So if you die, you can come back. Um, and you can also cast it to resurrect a dead target. The targets resurrect with 60% health and at least 20% mana. So mainly we're going to cast this on ourselves. Maybe if you're playing with a party and you have like a tank or something, you could cast it on the tank. That's, you know, entirely up to you. But if you're playing solo, we're just going to keep this on ourselves at all times. Um, that way, if something does go wrong and we die, we can just resurrect right on the spot. Next, we have Subjugate Demon. So this is going to subjugate a demon to do your bidding for five minutes. So you can only subjugate a demon that is equal to or below your own level, and it will replace your current demon. So just keep that in mind. Um, in Dragonflight, there's not really like a lot of demons for us to do this with. Uh, so it's not really something we're going to use. Next, we have our Summon Demon button. So this will summon different demons. Now, the demons that are available to summon are a little bit different depending on the specialization that you're playing. But we have four available by default on every single specialization. So we have the Imp. The Imp is kind of the starter demon that basically just does additional damage. So if for some reason you don't need one of the other utility style abilities or a role to be filled by a different pet, you could summon your Imp. We're not going to use Summon Imp at all. Uh, then we have Summon Void Lord. Uh, so this will actually summon a Void Walker. I have a glyph on here to make it a Void Lord. Um, and this is basically a tanking pet. And this is the one we're going to be using on Affliction. Um, this one does have a uh, couple of tanking abilities, and we'll talk about them when we get the pet summoned. Next, we have the Fell Hunter. So the Fell Hunter is able to interrupt the cast of your enemies. And we're going to be using this one on Destruction, but not for the reasons you would think. 
And then finally, we have summon Syad or Succubus, or this is going to summon a Succubus or Incubus that will be able to basically charm humanoid targets to prevent them from attacking. Um, both the Fell Hunter and the Syad are usually used in PvP situations. And although we do have a use for the Fell Hunter in our destruction build, uh, we're not going to be using the Succubus or Incubus at all. And for demonology, we actually are going to be using a demon that is specific to that specialization. Then we have unending breath. This will allow you to basically uh, swim underwater uh, without worrying about your breath bar for 10 minutes. And it'll also give you 20% increased uh, swim speed. So there's a few situations where you may use that in dragon flights, um, but that's there for you if you need it. And then our last active ability here in the Warlock portion of the spellbook is going to be Unending Resolve. And this is our uh, sort of mega uh, defensive ability. It's a three-minute cooldown. It will reduce all damage you take by 40% and grant immunity to interrupt silence and pushback effects for eight seconds. So we'll throw this out if we need to in situations where we get super low to give us some damage reduction while we try to get our health back up with things like health stones or uh, drain life or throw up a shield with dark pact. Um, not going to be used super often because of the long cooldown, but if we need to use it, we'll use it. So then we have a couple of passives here. We have Inquisitor's Gaze, uh, which we're getting from the talent build. Uh, we may not necessarily have this on every single build, but just... It's here for one of them, so we'll go over it. This just passively gives you a chance to summon an Inquisitor's Eye that will deal um, a nice chunk of Shadow Flame damage over a period of time. So it's just some passive extra damage that we may have in some of our specialization builds. So then we have Soul Shards. Soul Shards are going to be our main resource that we use. So we do have mana, but it's pretty irrelevant for all of our builds. Um, however, our main resource is going to be soul shards. So soul shards can be generated up to five. When you're out of combat, you will generate up to three automatically. And then you'll have different abilities that will generate soul shard fragments usually. And those fragments will build up to whole soul shards. And then you'll spin those soul shards on casting different abilities. And we'll get into, um, you know, which ones build and which ones spin as we get into each of the different specializations. And then finally, we have Soul Leech. This is a passive. So all single target damage done by you and your minions will grant you and your pet shadowy shields that absorb 3% of the damage dealt up to 15% of your maximum health. So this is a uh, really just passive damage reduction thing that we have for both us and our pets. All right, so we have a lot going on as a warlock, some good utility abilities, lots of survival. Um, our class tree, the talent side especially, is full of like really just a lot of utilities, not a whole lot of the active abilities we're picking up that we're going to use too much. But we've covered everything um, in the spell book that we need to for warlocks. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get into talking about Affliction. So this is what the build looks like. My character is currently level 61. So uh, your build may be a little bit different depending on where you are at. However, <clears throat> when it comes to finishing out the talent build, uh, we're not really going to pick up any additional active abilities with the exception of Fell Domination. And we'll go ahead and talk about this one real quick. Uh, this is a three minute cooldown ability that is going to allow you to basically instantly summon a demon. And the reason that we're gonna have this is on the off chance that our summon demon dies, we wanna be able to bring them back ASAP. So that's pretty much the only other active ability we're gonna be picking up as we make our way to level 70. And the rest of what we get is gonna be pretty passive. Okay, so let's get into the Affliction side of the spellbook. There's not too much here. And Affliction is all about putting a lot of damage over time effects onto the enemy. And uh, that's what most of the abilities you see here are going to be. So first we have Agony, which is going to uh, deal a bunch of damage over 18 seconds. The damage starts low and gets higher over the duration of the spell. Uh, and this will sometimes generate a soul shard when it deals damage. 
Next, we have Haunt. Haunt is a uh, cast ability. It's got a 1.3 second cast. It's going to deal damage over time to the target, and it will increase damage dealt to the target by 10% for 18 seconds. If the target dies while Haunt is active, the cooldown is reset. It does have a 15 second cooldown. So the cooldown gets reset if the target dies um, while Haunt is active. And honestly, we're not super worried about that because uh, generally by the time we kill something, Haunt's probably gonna be off cooldown anyway. Uh, we're gonna skip uh, Malefic Rapture and come back to it. So we have Seed of Corruption. This is gonna embed a demon seed in the enemy target that's gonna explode after 10 and a half seconds, dealing shadow damage to all enemies and applying corruption to them. So if you remember, corruption was the damage over time ability that we have in our Warlock section of the book. So this is a way to apply corruption to multiple targets and that's where you'll use this if you're going to pull two or three or four or five different things you throw out seed of corruption it'll explode and apply corruption to everything now you may say well it takes 10 and a half seconds well the seed will detonate early if the target is hit by other seed of corruption detonations or if they take a thousand damage from your spells, which will happen super fast. So it doesn't actually take the whole 10.5 seconds. It may take that long if you throw it on the target and then leave the target alone. Okay. So next we have Siphon Life. This is another damage over time ability that will deal damage for 15 seconds and then will heal us for 30% of the damage done. Uh, we're gonna skip Soul Swap and come back. We've got Unstable Affliction. So Unstable Affliction is a casted ability, much like Haunt, 1.3 second cast time here. It will flick the target with um, a damage over time ability that does a nice chunk of damage over 21 seconds. If dispelled, then it will deal a large chunk of damage instantly and silence the target. This typically is not gonna happen in open world content uh, because your targets are not gonna dispel negative debuffs. Uh, this will generate one soul shard if the target dies while they are afflicted. Okay, and then we have our mastery, which is potent affliction. So this increases damage done by malefic rapture, agony, corruption, siphon life, unstable affliction, and seed of corruption by a percentage of whatever your mastery is. So moving back to these other two abilities, we have Malefic Rapture. So this is our Soul Shard spending ability on Affliction. It's got a 1.3 second cast time. When we cast it, it will uh, deal damage based on the number of damage over time effects we have. It causes them to erupt, dealing a certain amount of damage per effect. So basically, we want to stack as many damage over time abilities as we can and then cast Malefic Rapture to have them all erupt and deal nice chunks of damage. The last ability here is Soul Swap. So this costs one Soul Shard, but what this will do is it will copy your damage over time effects from the current target, preserving their duration, and then your next use of Soul Swap within 10 seconds will exhale a copy of those effects onto a new target. So essentially what you can do is set up all your damage over time stuff on one target, Soul Swap to copy them, change targets, and then use Soul Swap to paste essentially all those effects onto the other target so that you don't have to spin up your damage over time effects twice on the same enemy so if you're going to be pulling more than one enemy um, i would recommend you know as long as it's two like kind of normal health enemies you set everything up on one soul swap and then you transfer everything over to the second target that way now the one other ability that we do have that we haven't talked about because we need to come back into the warlock tab and talk about it is going to be drain soul so Drain Soul is essentially the ability that we cast when we don't have anything else to cast. It's a channeled ability that's going to deal a nice chunk of shadow damage over 4.4 seconds. The damage will be increased by 100% against enemies below 20% health, and it will generate a Soul Shard for us if the target dies during the effect. So essentially what we're going to do is set up all of our dots. We're going to cast our Malefic Raptures to get those nice big chunky damage hits. And then we're going to drain Soul to finish off the target when they're low health and to generate a Soul Shard for us. The rotation for Affliction is very 
very, very simple. It is very simple. It is not complicated. If you want an easy to play specialization, this is going to be it. So let's get started taking a look at our rotation. So first off, this is letting me know, hey, you need to go ahead and generate your health stones. So I'm going to create those health stones. And then those health stones will be in my bag. I'll put them under my bar so I can use them if I need to. And then also, hey, you need to go ahead and soul stone yourself in case you die. So we'll do those. And now we are good. All right. So when we get a target, essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to cast haunt. And we're going to put this on there to increase the damage dealt to the target by 10% for 18 seconds. Then we're going to cast unstable affliction. And uh, basically what we're doing once we get haunt on the target is we are casting our damage over time abilities in the order of how long they last. So we're going to cast unstable affliction first because it lasts for 21 seconds. Then we're going to cast agony. It lasts for 18. Siphon life will last for 15. Corruption will last for 14. So we're basically going to go down the list and just cast those in order. That way we get the most amount of damage out of all of them. And by the time haunt or unstable affliction, uh, is done and we need to recast it uh, these other ones will be uh, kind of in the same position so that's essentially what we're going to do here so we're going to cast one two three four five and then we're going to cast our malefic rapture until we're out of soul shards and then after that we're going to cast drain soul if the target lives beyond that then we're basically just going to repeat the process so let's try it out on this mammoth we're going to start with haunt we're going to go into an unstable affliction Agony, Siphon Life, Corruption. He's going to trample. And then we're going to cast our Malefic Rapture. Okay. Now, that's us by ourselves. That's kind of our, our base rotation there. And you could see that obviously this guy was on us. We were taking a little bit of damage, but... That's because what we need to do is we need to summon our demon. So our demon for affliction is going to be the Void Walker, or if you have the glyph, it's the Void Lord. This is going to be our tanking pet. So when this pet comes out, it has a few different abilities. So uh, it has consuming shadows to drain health from nearby enemies. It has suffering, which will taunt the target. Uh, it has Threatening Presence, which increases its threat generation. And then it has Shadow Bulwark, which will increase its current and maximum health by 30% for 20 seconds. This is also our Command Demon ability. So we have... Uh, I believe it moved it. Here we go. So we can command the... Uh, the demon to use this ability as well. So this demon is basically going to go into tank for us. We're going to have it on assist. And so now whenever we start up our rotation, uh, the enemy is generally not even going to come over to us because we're going to have that tank. So we cast one, two, three, four, five. We do our malefic raptures. And then we go ahead and we cast drain soul. Drain soul when the target is low is going to deal increased damage and generate soul shards for us. So we have the full five here. We start the next target. One, two, three, four, five. We do our Malefic Raptures. And we do our Drained Soul. And the target's dead. Super, super easy. All right. So we'll come over here and do some red bars, and I'll also show you how to use our uh, soul swap ability. All right, so first off, this is a normal enemy, so we're going to go ahead, haunt, unstable affliction, agony, siphon life, corruption, and then we're just going to spam malefic rapture until the target gets down to around 20%, and then we're going to go ahead and drain soul. That's going to kill the target and get us a soul shard. Okay. Let's go ahead. We'll grab this guy. We'll pull him by himself. So we'll haunt. Unstable affliction. Agony. Siphon life. Corruption. Go back into our malefic rapture. Now the reason I drained soul there is because we got a proc. That stuff is built into the weak auras. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do now is on these two targets here, we're gonna set up our rotation, one, two, three, four, five on the main target. Then we're going to copy that with soul swap. We're gonna switch targets to the, uh, the other enemy and we're gonna paste those effects onto that target. Then we're gonna go back to our main target and finish it off, okay? So when we start here, as soon as they get close enough, we're gonna do haunt. Unstable Affliction, Agony, Siphon Life, Corruption. Then we're going to hit Soul Swap. We're going to tab over to the Calf. We're going to hit Soul Swap, Exhale. It's going to paste all those. We're going to go back to the main target, Malefic Rapture, into a Drained Soul. And as you can see, that second target just died from our damage over time effects. So that's essentially how you use uh, Soul Swap. And again, um, you got to keep in mind that you, if you copy everything, it has to be used within 10 seconds. Um, so you can actually, when you get to sort of, here's a, here's another way to use it. All right. So we do haunt, unstable affliction, agony, siphon life, corruption. We do our malefic rapture to get the damage down. We go ahead, we hit soul swap. We finish them off with drained soul. And then we just, we got to move to the next target and we can uh, soul swap exhale on the target. It gives us some ticks right away. And then we can finish off the target. That is not an optimal way to do this in my opinion, because you're really, you're spending those soul shards to get like maybe 10 seconds or something um, of buffs up on the target. So I really don't recommend that you do that. You have such a short window with that 10 seconds. It just makes it really difficult. But anytime you're gonna pull two or more targets, uh, I think it's definitely worth using. Or alternatively, what you can do is you could put out one, two, three, four, five, copy it, and then at like nine seconds, just paste it back on to refresh the duration of all of your buffs. But really that's not super necessary. So again, to me, the kind of the most optimal way to use it is if you're gonna pull two targets, get everything on one target, and then go ahead and paste it over to the second target. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to go and fight an elite. I had a request that we do this, so that's what we're gonna do. So we've got this Planeswalker Bull up here. This is an elite, level 61, same as me. So we're gonna go through the process here. We're gonna go Haunt, Unstable Affliction, Agony, Siphon Life, Corruption. We're gonna start spamming our Malefic Raptures until we are out of Soul Shards. He's gonna do a Trample which we don't want to cast during that because it will shadow lock us. Then he's going to do a stomp, which is an AOE, so we just want to get out of that. All right, then we're just going to go through. We're going to refresh all of our dots again. One, two, three, four, five. Back into Malefic Rapture. We're out of Soul Shard, so we're just going to start using Drain Soul. All right, we got shadow lock because I wasn't paying attention. Stomp's coming again. We're going to hit Malefic Rapture. We're gonna drain soul. And we're probably just gonna drain soul the rest of the time because they're below 20%. So we get increased damage with drain soul. And we will get the soul shard back from that as well. Easy peasy, if you look at our pet's health, not a big deal. We could always health funnel to fill them back up. And then we're good to go. So that is an elite with the affliction build. Super, super, this is a, in my opinion, like just a mindless, super chill, watch Netflix on the side kind of a rotation. All right, and that's pretty much it for Affliction. All right, so now we're gonna get into our Demonology Warlock. All right. So our Demonology Warlock is the master of pets, essentially um, summons a ton of demons. This is what the talent build looks like. Again, my Warlock is level 61, so um, things may be a little different depending on where you're at. However, uh, as we continue to level up to level 70, uh, we're going to be picking up one additional active ability, which is going to be Guillotine. Guillotine is a ability on a 45 second cooldown. Uh, it's going to cause your Felguard, which is the pet we're going to be using, 
to hurl its axe towards the target location, erupting when it lands and dealing damage every one second for eight seconds to nearby enemies. And then while unarmed, your Felguard's basic attacks will deal damage to all nearby enemies and attack 50% faster. So you can really use this two ways. You can just throw it out on cooldown for an additional damage boost, or you can basically just use it in AoE situations where you're pulling more than one target. It's really uh, kind of up to you. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the demonology abilities. We do not have a lot of them. Uh, so first off, we have Call Dreadstalkers. This is a Soul Shard spinning ability. It's going to cost two Soul Shards, has a 20 second cooldown, and it's going to summon two Dreadstalker demons to attack the target for 12 seconds. Next, we have Demon Bolt. Demon Bolt is an ability that has a almost four second cast time, super, super long. It's going to send out the fiery souls of a fallen demon and deal a, not a lot of damage, but what it does do is it generates two soul shards for us. So this is a huge soul shard generator ability that we want to use. And what we're going to do is use that with this passive called Demonic Core. So when our wild imps, which we summon wild imps as a demonology warlock, when they expend all their energy or they are imploded, we actually don't use the implode me mechanic in this build, so don't worry about that. Basically, when our imps expire, there's a 10% chance to absorb their life essence, which will give us a demonic core. When our summoned dread stalkers fade away, we have a 100% chance to get a demonic core. A demonic core reduces the cast time of demon bolt by 100%. So... Demon Bolt generates two soul shards for us. It has a super long cooldown, but anytime one of our imps expires or uh, our dread stalkers expire, we have that chance to get the demonic core, which will make our Demon Bolt instant cast. So essentially, we're only ever going to cast Demon Bolt when we have demonic core and the ability is instant cast and we can actually uh, get both soul shards that are generated. So if we have four soul shards, out of five, we're not going to cast Demon Bolt because we want to make sure we get the full two shards. So we're going to cast something that uses soul shards to get us down to, you know, maybe like one. And then we're going to cast that Demon Bolt with the buff to get the full two soul shards out of it. So next we have Hand of Gul'dan. This costs one to three soul shards and it will call down a meteor full of wild imps that will attack the target. It deals damage on impact to all enemies um, and will summon up to three wild imps based on soul shards consumed. Basically, we want to cast this at three soul shards all the time just to get the full damage from it and to get the full wild imps from it. it the cast time does not get modified based on how many soul shards you use. So since you have to do the full cast you might as well get the full effect out of it as well and really we don't have a whole lot of other things to spin soul shards on aside from called dread stalkers which is on a 20 second cooldown anyway next we have soul strike so this will command our felguard pet to strike the enemy dealing some shadow damage but more importantly it will generate a soul shard for us so this is uh, a a sort of filler for generating soul shards for us when we don't have demon bolt up because this is basically an instant cast ability we instantly can get a soul shard from that and then our other soul shard generating ability is going to be shadow bolt so shadow bolt is a cast ability that does some damage and generates a soul shard so our priority for generating soul shards is demon bolt if we have the buff and we can get all the soul shards soul strike if it's not on cooldown and then worst comes to worst, we generate soul shards with shadow bolt. Okay, and then we have our mastery, which increases the damage done by our demons. And that's pretty much it for the abilities. Not a whole lot going on there. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, summon our fell guard. So this is the pet that we're gonna use. It uh, is a little more aggressive than the void walker is. For abilities, it has a charge. Uh, that will increase its movement speed. It has Legion Strike, which will deal damage to everything in front of it and reduce the effectiveness of healing that those targets use. It also has Axe Toss, which causes the um, Felguard to hurl its weapon, stunning and interrupting the target. Uh, and then we also have Fell Storm. So Fell Storm will cause the target to strike all nearby enemies, um, 
It's basically a spin to win sort of move. Okay, so it doesn't really taunt for you, but it is out there at the front doing a lot of damage. And the majority of the damage that you do as a Demonology Warlock actually comes from your pets. So you really won't be pulling uh, enemies off of your uh, fell guard anyway. Okay, so the rotation here is, uh, it gets a little interesting in terms of the priority for your different abilities, but uh, we're just gonna showcase kind of like the basics first. And then we'll get into talking about maybe some more specifics. All right, so if you're starting combat and you have soul shards available, oh, our soul stone is ready to be cast again. If you have soul shards available, then you're gonna kick things off with call dread stalkers because you want those dread stalkers out for that 12 seconds that they're gonna be helping you and you wanna get that ability on cooldown so you can use it on the next enemy. So we're gonna call dread stalkers. That's gonna take two of our three soul shards and then we wanna build back up to three soul shards in order to cast Hand of Gul'dan to get the full effect of that in all three imps. So we're gonna do call dread stalkers, then we're gonna generate some soul stones or, and then we uh, are some soul shards. Then we're gonna cast hand of Gul'dan. That's gonna drop us back down. We're gonna generate more soul shards. That's kind of the basic flow, but things are gonna happen during that flow that uh, make it a little bit crazy. So let's go ahead and give this a shot, right? So we're gonna call dread stalkers. Then we're gonna cast our soul strike, instant strike, one soul shard generator. Then we're going to need to cast Shadow Bolt to get the third, and then we're going to cast our Hand of Gul'dan. Now, in this case, we're coming into combat. A couple of things happen here. One, if Call Dreadstalkers is on cooldown and you have Soul Shards, then you would cast Hand of Gul'dan to start combat. We actually got the Demonic Core buff, so what we can do here, since we have three out of five, is we can open up with Demon Bolt. But what we're going to do is we're going to do call dread stalkers. All right, we're going to do our soul strike and then our shadow bolt. That gets us the three. We're going to cast hand of Gul'dan. And then we're back generating soul shards just with shadow bolt here because soul strike was on cooldown. And you can see our, our army grows. All right, so here we're going to do Call Dread Stalkers. We're going to go ahead and use Demon Bolt because we can get the full two shards and we have the Demonic Core buff. We're going to use it again. Then we're going to cast Hand of Gul'dan. We're going to use Demon Bolt again. We're going to cast Hand of Gul'dan. Demon Bolt. Demon Bolt. Target's dead. But you can see, like, the Demon Bolt procs start to happen a lot. And so really it's just about effectively making sure that you use those so that you can get all the soul shards from them. And pretty much every time you hit three soul shards or more, you're gonna cast Hand of Gul'dan. Unless Call Dreadstalkers is available and then you're gonna cast Call Dreadstalkers. All right, so here we're gonna open with Demon Bolts. We're gonna Call Dreadstalkers. We're gonna Hand of Gul'dan because we have max soul shards. And we don't want to cast Demon Bolt at max soul shards because that soul shard generation will be wasted, right? But what we can do is we can cast it now. Then we got our Call Dreadstalkers again. Demon Bolts, Hand of Gul'dan because we don't want to waste that soul shard that Demon Bolt would generate. Go ahead and Hand of Gul'dan again. This addiction, or this addiction, this rotation can be very addictive to play because it has that like, ooh, let me keep going. I got the demon bolt. Let me summon as many of these demons as I possibly can. And you can see like the damage output is very good as well. And like, look at all of these. Look at the army, right? We got our dread stalkers. We got our wild imps. We got our imp gang boss. We got our uh, fell guard. We got everybody over here. All right, so hand to Gul'dan because we're capped at soul shards. Cast call dread stalkers because it's available. We're going to cast demon bolt because we can get the full two shards and we're not yet at three where we would cast hand of Gul'dan. Soul strike was off cooldown and we needed it there. All right. Get those demon bolts. Another hand to Gul'dan. And that's pretty much it. So with demonology, it's a lot about knowing how to prioritize your abilities, right? So if you are three soul shards or above, 
then typically you just want to cast Hand of Gul'dan unless Call Dread Stalkers is available. So those are our two Soul Shard spending abilities. And it's always Call Dread Stalkers if it's available, Hand of Gul'dan if it's not. And you want three Soul Shards for Hand of Gul'dan. For our generators, again, if you have Demon Bolt with the buff and you have two or more missing Soul Shards, then you would cast Demon Bolt. Otherwise, you cast Soul Strike to instantly generate a Soul Shard. Or if that's on cooldown, you cast Shadow Bolt to just generate Soul Shards. So as long as you can keep that priority in mind and keep tracking what's going on uh, in the combat then there really aren't that many abilities. And uh, like I said, it's a fun rotation. It can be pretty addicting. There's lots of big shiny buttons and things. So we're gonna come over here and we're going to uh, do this on these uh, normal enemies over here. So uh, we basically are starting from scratch. So we're gonna open with Call Dread Stalkers. That's gonna put us down to one. Then we're gonna need to generate those. So we'll do that with our Soul Strike into a Shadow Bolt. And then that's going to give us three. So we use Hand of Gul'dan. And then we just go back to generating shadow uh, soul shards through Shadow Bolt. We got Demonic Core with Demon Bolt with uh, two missing soul shards. So we cast that so we get the full two soul shards from it. All right. So we're going in for the next target. Again, we don't want to cast Demon Bolt here because we're at four out of five. So we're going to open with Call Dread Stalkers. Go into Hand of Gul'dan. We're going to generate Soul Shards through Soul Strike and Shadow Bolt. We just got Shadow Locked. So Shadow Bolt. Hand of Gul'dan. We got a Demon Bolt proc, so we'll cast that. We've got another one. So before that goes away, we'll go find the next victim. <laughs> and we can open with that. Into a Call Dread Stalkers. Into a Demon Bolt into a hand of Gul'dan, Soul Strike into Shadow Bolt to get us back up to three. All right, we got interrupted, but we did get Demon Bolt with Demonic Core, so we'll cast that into a hand of Gul'dan, into another hand of Gul'dan. Get our Dread Stalkers out there. Another Demon Bolt, another Demon Bolt, hand of Gul'dan. And as you can see, this uh, this build, it just wrecks stuff. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go over and do our showcase against the elite enemy, like I mentioned. Um, I got, request, got requested to do that in these videos so you could see kind of how these play against elites. So we're going to go over and find our elite mammoth. That one's not there. This one is here. Okay. All right, so we are at zero. We're just starting with us and our fell guard, and we should have, yep, we got our wild imps starting to pop up. Um, so what we're going to do here is uh, our abilities do do some AoE, so we may pull some of these other enemies, but that's fine. So we're going to open up with that call Dread Stalkers. Soul Strike and his Shadow Bolt into Hand of Gul'dan. We got call Dread Stalkers up again. We've got to generate... The combo are the soul shards for it. I almost said combo points. All right, so we'll get that out. We're using our demon bolt there to get enough soul shards to cast hand to Gul'dan. Kind of weaving back and forth between the two at the moment. Oh, we got stomped. I wasn't paying attention. Our uh, fell guard is low, so we're going to go ahead and use health funnel on him. All right, so that's going to get his health back up. We're just gonna health funnel him until he's back up to full health. All right, then we can cast Drain Life on the target to get our health back up. All right, so we took a little hit there. Let's get back, let's get out of that stomp. Let's get back into Call Dread Stalkers. Demon Bolt, Hand of Gul'dan. Demon Bolt, Hand of Gul'dan. We're gonna heal up our Fell Guard again. He's taking a lot of damage because we did pull extra enemies from our AoE. All right, we're going to drain life to get ourselves back up here. Switch back to DPS, and we're good to go. And luckily, we did that before this person flew in. Is this the... 
Oh no, it's a different guy. It's not the it's not the bear I see all the time. So you can see, like, it got a little bit more hectic there because we pulled extra enemies. Um, so we've got AOE on called Dreadstalkers. We've got AOE on Handed Gul'dan. Um, our Fell Guard does his spinny thing. That's also AOE. So um, you know. Uh, there's the chance that you pull more things than you want to, but as you can see, like just throwing out those health funnels and focusing on keeping our pet alive, and then we can recover our health through our drain life. Uh, we also, instead of drain life, we could just, you know, hit our health stone as well. Um, so yeah, this build is, um, this specialization in this build is really fun because there's just a ton of pets, a ton of demons that you get to play with, and you just kind of get this growing army over time. Uh, but that is pretty much it for demonology. All right, we're going to do a reload here. Anytime I get those errors, a reload will fix them. All right, so now we're going to talk about demonology. Last but certainly not least, uh, demonology is pretty rock solid in this expansion so far from everything I've been able to tell. Uh, so this is what the talent build is going to look like. My Again, my Warlock's level 61. As we continue to build out the talent build, the only additional active ability we're going to get is we're going to pick up Fell Domination, which I mentioned when we went over the Affliction Warlock. This will let us instant cast summon a pet. We're not actually going to use a pet as Destruction Warlock, but on the off chance we get in a bad situation and we want to summon like the Voidwalker to tank for us while we, you know, figure it out, um, we're going to have Fell Domination in there just as kind of a oh crap sort of button that we can push. All right, so let's get into the Destruction Warlock tab here. Uh, we've got more abilities here than we have had for the other specializations. So um, let's go ahead and talk about our emulates so emulates is going to be a damage over time debuff that we can put on the target it deals a little bit of fire damage initially but then it does a lot of fire damage over 18 seconds this will generate soul shard fragments for us and has a chance to generate additional fragments on critical strikes now we went over this one first because we have a few abilities that interact with this the first one is going to be cataclysm so cataclysm will call forth a cataclysm at the location dealing a bunch of shadow flame damage uh, to all enemies within eight yards and afflicting them with emulate. So this is basically the way that you apply emulate to multiple targets. And this is something you have to keep in mind because the weak artist helper is not going to tell you to do this. So if you are going to pull a couple of different enemies, you got to know, okay, I want to, I want to hit them with cataclysm. All right. The next ability we have that kind of interacts with emulate is going to be channel demon fire. So this is an ability with a 22 second cooldown. It will launch 20 bolts of fell fire per second at random targets that have your emulate on them within 40 yards. Each bolt will deal a certain amount of fire damage and additional fire damage to nearby enemies. Now, the thing about this is if you only have emulate on one target, then it will randomly hit that only target that's a possible option 20 times and do a massive amount of damage to that enemy. Um, but if you had like cast cataclysm or had emulate up on a couple of targets then it will kind of randomly split those bolts between those targets so keeping that in mind when we're fighting a single target we can throw an emulate on them and then hit channel demon fire to just do a huge chunk of damage and then we also have soul fire so full soul fire is a ability that has a very long cast time it has a 45 second cooldown but it hits the target very very hard generates a soul shard and it applies emulate to them so basically what we're going to do is anytime we have soul fire available to start combat we're going to cast that and it's going to put emulate on them and then we can do like our fun channel demon fire stuff but if we don't have soul fire available because it's on cooldown then we're going to just hard cast emulate on the target all right, so our other abilities, we have Chaos Bolt. This is our primary Soul Shard spending ability. It costs two Soul Shards, and it has a fairly long cast time, but it does a huge chunk of damage that um, is a critical strike, and that critical strike uh, damage is increased by your critical strike chance. 
So it's kind of a, a weird little backwards critical ability, but it, it, it hits very hard. And we have con uh, Conflagrate which is an ability that is instant cast. It does a chunk of fire damage initially. Then it will reduce the cast time of your next incinerate or chaos bolt by 30% for 10 seconds. We basically want to try to always use conflagrate to reduce the cast time of our chaos bolt because it has that really long cast time. This will also generate five soul shard fragments, which is half of a soul shard. Each soul shard is 10 fragments uh, and it comes with three charges. And then we have our incinerate. This is sort of our uh, filler spell that we cast when we don't have anything else to do. It will uh, deal fire damage to the enemy. It'll generate two soul shard fragments plus an additional one on critical strikes. And we also have picked up a talent where our incinerate will also hit uh, enemies near the target for 25% of the damage, which kind of turns it into a little bit of a sort of spammy AOE ability that we can use. Then we have Rain of Fire. Rain of Fire is our actual soul shard spending AOE ability. So if we're in a situation where instead of Chaos Bolt against a single target, we actually want to deal damage to multiple targets, then we can cast Rain of Fire. Nice thing about this is it's instant cast, so there's no cast time, but it does cost three soul shards, and it does an okay amount of damage over seven seconds to enemies within the area. It's a decently sized area. Um, so we will kind of utilize this generally in the situations where you would cast cataclysm You would probably want to cast rain of fire instead of chaos bolt All right, so then we have shadow burn. So this is another soul shard spending ability It costs one soul shard. It has a 11 second recharge with two charges on it It will deal a decent amount of damage to the target but it gains a 50% increased critical strike chance on targets that are below 20% or less health. So it's very good for using on targets as kind of like a uh, execute style ability or a finisher. Uh, and then it will restore one soul shard and refund a charge if the target dies within five seconds of the ability being cast. So again, this is something that we're going to be throwing out when the target's near to dead to kind of finish them off with a nice... Hopefully a, a, a nice chunky little crit will get the soul shard back. So effectively the ability will be free uh, and we'll also get the charge of shadow burn back as well. So we should be able to use this on every enemy. And we've got the two charges there because we can kind of spam it on an elite or a rare spawn once they hit 20% health just for some additional damage. And then our final ability here is going to be our Grimoire of Sacrifice. So this is an ability that will sacrifice our demon pet for power, gaining its command demon ability, and causing our spells to sometimes deal additional shadow damage. This will last one hour or until we summon a demon pet. So a couple components to this. So first off, we're going to be using the Fell Hunter as our pet. So we're going to summon the Fell Hunter. And then we're going to use Grimoire of Sacrifice to sacrifice the Fell Hunters so we no longer have the pet. But what we gain is their command ability, which is Spell Lock. Spell Lock is a interrupt ability on a 24 second cooldown. So now as a Destruction Warlock, we have a uh, regular easy to use interrupt ability, which is gonna help us a lot uh, as we go about our um our questing and leveling and stuff like that in addition we're going to have that chance to deal additional shadow damage with our spells uh, which we cast a lot of spells and this actually procs a decent amount of time and then through the talent tree we've kind of picked up some other buffs that will kind of buff a demon but if we don't have the demon it buffs us for example uh, here, this one says filling a soul shard increases the damage done by your primary pet by 5% for 8 seconds. Well, we don't have a primary pet. Instead, it increases Grimoire of Sacrifice damage by 15%. So we've actually buffed our damage for that quite a bit. All right. So generally speaking, what we're going to be doing, uh, it's it, it, it gets a little interesting on the Destruction Warlock. So like I said, we want to start out by having an Immolate on the target. 
If we have Soul Fire, we're gonna cast that because it does a huge chunk of damage and will apply uh, Immolate and also generate a full Soul Shard for us. So that's a great opener. If we don't have that, we're gonna open up with Immolate and just get that onto the target to start the burn. After that, typically what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna cast um, our Confurgate at least one, uh, maybe two times, depending. Uh, and that way we can reduce the cast time of our chaos bolt. So we will open up with soul fire or an emulate to get those going. We'll do a couple, uh, conflagrates, um, in order to reduce the cast time on our chaos bolt. We'll cast chaos bolt to spend soul shards, and then we'll start trying to continue to generate soul shards, which at that point would be basically through casting incinerate. That's the, the core sort of rotation, but around that we have a few other things that we're doing. So typically what we're gonna do is we're gonna soul fire, and then we'll soul fire. That's gonna do a huge chunk of damage. It's gonna put emulate on the target. And then we just finish them off with a conflagrate, essentially. Or we finish them off with like a shadow burn cast. Because remember, we're using shadow burn as kind of like an executability for when the enemy gets low. Then in those situations where we don't have soul fire to do that huge chunk of damage for us right off the bat, we'll cast emulate and then we'll go into channel demon fire, which will do a ton of damage to that target as well. And by that time, maybe we cast a conflagrate or something like that and then into a shadow burn. If for some reason our soul fire and our channel demon fire are both on cooldown, then we'll open up with like the emulates into the conflagrate into the chaos bolt sort of rotation. So there's kind of like uh, three different, pardon me, three different sort of rotations that we can do. And then there's the all out like soul fire into channel demon fire into conflagrate into chaos bolt and like repeat this process because we're probably fighting an elite or something like that. So I'll try to showcase uh, these as we go through so you can kind of see the differences. All right, so let's start with kind of like the optimal nothing is on cooldown sort of opener we have, which is going to be to do our soul fire and then essentially just finish off whatever's left of the target with confrogate into like a shadow burn normally. All right, so we're going to cast our soul fire super long cast time here. Boom, we're going to hit the target. We're going to confrogate. And then in this case, it's got a little bit of health, so we're going to chaos bolt into our shadow burn, which we actually <laughs> hit our shadow burn on a different target there because that target died from our soul fire, uh, which is totally fine. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this up real quick. So what we can do here is we can cataclysm to get our emulates on everything, and then we can channel demon fire, finish everything off. All right, so we'll have to wait on channel demon fire to come back. Um, all right, so we'll just do kind of like the, hey, everything's on cooldown approach here. We're gonna cast emulates. We're gonna cast Conflagrate, Conflagrate into our Shadow Burn, or sorry, our Chaos Bolt. Then we're gonna go Incinerate, get them down to around 20%, and then we're gonna cast Shadow Burn to finish off the target. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do that again over here. All right, we're gonna do the, the boring, everything is on cooldown rotation again, okay? So Immolate into con Conflagrate, twice and then we're going to shadow burn i'm just going to start saying conflag because for whatever reason that's difficult for me to say <laughs> uh all right so let's do one more time through on kind of the boring rotation we're going to immolate conflag conflag into our chaos bolt then we're going to incinerate to get them below 20 percent and then we're going to cast shadow burn and we can finish them off with an incinerate, right? So that gets us back our charge and our soul shard um, from casting shadow burn. So that's the super boring kind of easy version. So again, in this situation, uh, when we do have our soul fire available, we're gonna cast that instead of casting immolate, but then the rotation is pretty much gonna be about the same. So we're gonna soul fire. If the target's below 20% or just gets one shot, <laughs> <laughs> if the target's below 20% after we cast Soul Fire, then we're just going to go ahead and cast Shadow Burn. All right. So let's go try this against some real enemies with some more health. Kind of showcase how this works here. 
All right, so we're going to go our Immolates, and since Soul Fire's on cooldown, but Demon Fire is up, then we're going to go ahead and go straight into Demon Fire on the single target. Then we're going to Conflag, Conflag, Shadow Burn, and then we're going to Incinerate to finish him off. All right, so we got our Charge back. We got our Soul Shard back. We're ready to go to the next target. Soul Fire's up, so we're going to cast this. See where the target's at. 45%. So we're going to go ahead and cast a Chaos Bolt. Up, oh, he got us. He got us with the silence. I was hoping we'd get it in time. We're going to Shadow Burn because he's under 20%. All right. No big deal. All right, so we'll take this target on. So this time we're going to skip the Channel Demon Fire. We're just going to do... Conflag, Conflag. We're going to go into Chaos Bolt. Incinerate. Into Shadow Burn. And good. Okay. Now, the reason I didn't use Channel Demon Fire there is I wanted to use it on these two. So, what we're going to do for these two is we're going to cast Catal Cataclysm to get Immolate on both of them. Then we're going to go into our Channel Demon Fire. So, we're just going to. Wind this up. That'll hit both of them. Oh, he knocked me back when I tried to channel Demon Fire, so we didn't get it. That's okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and Chaos Bolt. Into Incinerate. Into a Shadow Flame. Or Shadow Burn, sorry. All right, we'll do that AOE combo, uh, but I got got on that one. We'll do that uh, later. So we're going to go fight an elite. As you can see, we don't have a pet or any pets. It's just 100% us out here. So I want to kind of showcase, you know, how we do against an elite out here. All right. So we're going to go full in maximum initial DPS. So we're going to go uh, soul fire straight into channel demon fire. And you're going to see this will do a nice chunk of damage. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to soul fire. We're going to channel demon fire. All right. That took off 15% health con flag. He's going to trample, which is an interrupt. Boom. Then we check to see if he's going to stomp. He is. So we're going to get out of it. We're going to go into chaos bolts con flag. We're going to Chaos Bolt again. All right. Then we're going to start building up some Soul Shards with Incinerate right now because things are on cooldown. Con Flag. We're going to get Interrupted again. All right. So then we're going to recast Immolates on the targets. We've got a Health Stone. We can use that to get some health back. We can also Drain Life. We're taking a... We're getting out. We're getting... Oh, we got hit by the Stomp. Okay. So this Unending Resolve. We can do our Dark Pact. We can do our drain life here. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to focus on getting our health back. We're just going to repeat cast drain life and dodge attacks is essentially what we're going to do. So yeah, this one was my bad for getting hit by that stomp and that interrupt. So we got shadow burn. Got hit by the interrupts. All right. Shadow burn. Now, what we could have done here is we had Channel Demon Fire back, so we could have used that again as well uh, if we needed to. If you're ever on a Warlock, you can just grab an easy enemy and just start doing Drain Life to get yourself back up to full health. And then just go ahead and finish them off. So I want to do one more uh, elite enemy here on destruction because I feel like, uh, you know, getting hit by that interrupt and that stomp, that was just that was just poor play on my part. <laughs> All right, so we've got we're going to do the same thing. Let's go into that that same opener here. All right, so soul fire. Channel demon fire con flag We're going to go ahead and chaos bolts. We got it before the trample, so we're going to let him hit us with the trample. We're going to immediately kind of move out here to make sure we're out of that stomp. All right. Double con flag into chaos bolts. Get those incinerates going. All right. Con flag. Keep an eye out. Trample on the interrupt. 
All right, so we got hit. Let's make sure we're moving out in case of the stomp. It didn't come, so we're okay. Cast our health stone. Oh, there's the stomp. Oh, we got hit by it. We'll throw up our shield. We'll drain life. All right, we're going to get that Enemalate going so that we can get Channel Demon Fire out here. We're going to do... Shadow Burn, Shadow Burn, and we're just going to do a couple of con flags to finish them off. So you can see we take more damage on the Destruction Warlock here than we do on the other ones because we're not using a pet. But, you know, on something like an Elite, we still have plenty of ways to manage our health. I mean, we've got all these cooldowns. We've got Drain Life. Uh, we still could have uh, did like uh, Mortal Coil for a heal. Uh, I'll show that to you real quick. So, like on this target here, if we wanted to, uh, we could Mortal Coil, get back 20% of our health. But what all of uh, this does with us not having a pet is it gives us the interrupt, which is great. And it just gives us a lot more damage on your average target as well. But, again, if you're going to fight an elite, what you can do is you can always summon your Void Lloyd lord uh, or your void walker for that elite as well so that's one of the reasons like in that situation there as we continue the talent build and we get fell domination you can hit fell domination into your void walker to have the tank or you can just pull it up so um, you're not bound to using grimoire of sacrifice all the time but on every just about every enemy like there's no reason really not to but if you're going to tackle a tough enemy just summon your void walker not a big deal all right, so that is going to do it. That's all three specializations uh, covered with their talent builds. Again, uh, I'm going to have resources available for you. So check the description below for the link to the channel Gilded, where you can find the talent builds for every 10 levels starting at level 20. So that's going to be 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Uh, also, you can find the week ours there and you can join us for our WoW events or any of the other stuff that we're doing. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought about the Elite Enemy Showcase if you like that and you want to see it in future videos. And if you want me to do a showcase um, for the previous classes that I did, I can do a little, you know, Elite Fight Showcase for those uh, if that's something that you'd be interested in. So please let me know about that in the comment section below. Again, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.